morning dudes and dudettes or guys and girls or whatever how are you doing right first update of this kit that you see in front of you uh, before we start I'm gonna say it is testing me big time it is really really testing my modeling skills to the brim uh, for such a small what looks like a basic kit it's only got 11 steps but it's just fit issues that's the only thing with it unbelievable now the, the last kit i've ever made that has really tested me not tested me my know-how me my patience and whatever else and i've put in the box several times and thought sod this for a game of soldiers i don't want to do it anymore was the airfix 172nd vulcan terrible terrible kit for the only kit of its kind and to be that awful airfix need shooting for what they did really and for such an iconic aircraft too anyway yeah um this one has just been a nightmare everything to an extent won't fit and whether it's me doing something wrong whether i'm sanding wrong or whatever else which i don't think i am um just won't fit nothing fits I, I come to dry fit stuff first it seems okay and then when i've um, put things into place and whatever else they just don't fit it's just unbelievable now it's a special edition of kit as well which it says just down here it's a special edition kit there's only been so many made uh, this was uh, donated to me by from joe and um, so i don't want to slate it too much because obviously i'm grateful for sending me this i really am but at the same time you know just because it's got some fit issues we're modelers aren't we so that's what the beauty of this uh, thing is you know i suppose in a way i've been spoiled for the last few builds i've built tamir uh, meng and ryfield so and dragon so um of course it's all been fitted perfect not a problem at all so it's nice i suppose sometimes to have issues like this the only thing I'm just a bit downhearted with is just the fact, obviously, I'm not so used to aircraft. So in a way, I could just do with it just fitting just nicely, just for the first few aircraft kits. And then, obviously, they can start testing me again. But, you know, hey I've um, on this kit, I've done scratch building, which I'll show you, which I'm quite chuffed with. It's basic, very basic, but I'm chuffed with it. Uh, and... Uh, I've done my own masking because obviously it's an academy kit so it's not an Edward kit so it doesn't come with um, any masks or anything and uh, to be honest I haven't decided to go and look for anything you know like uh, uh, what can you call it uh, aftermarket stuff because I just thought I'll do it myself plus I've also scratch built and made me own seat belts as well harnesses so I'm quite sure for them as well anyway let's have a look at the kit guys okay Okay, so there she is. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, can you? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, she's okay. She's, like I say, I haven't done much at all at the minute to her. Um, I have masked the cockpit, as you can see. So that's all masked already. Again, I haven't done a fantastic job at masking that. Um, so let's have a look. It all comes in different parts. Um, set, let's separate the parts that it's all done in. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at this. Let's just see if I can move the... Right. I have... done the cockpit. Now, I don't know if you can see that. The actual seat belts in there. Can you see i've done them myself scratch built them made all that myself painted and weathered the cockpit so that's all done i don't know if you can particularly see all that well let's just have a look you can see i've had fish fit issues here basically all the way along it i've just had terrible fit issues along this it's just been really bad. Um, I've painted and weathered the uh, wheel and the hook on the back. So that's all done. 
Um, it's all now smoothed and sanded. I'm just going to have to re um, rivet the you know, the uh, panel lines and everything again, which is going to be new to me again. Needs a bit of filler on the tail end here, which I missed. But I'll do that later, it's not a problem. The next part, which I was chuffed with, is the engine. I don't know if you can see, but I've painted and weathered all that inside. I've also scratch built, basically what I've done is I've added some fuse wire and bent it round the coils inside. There's the proof at the back. So you can see I've added it them all the way around. Um, the engine is being painted and weathered, but as you can see, the engine shell, again, has got fit issues. So I've had to do that again there. Um, it's painted. I've, it's it's all painted and primed with um, make it at the minute, make paints. Um, I've said to you before in previous videos, I really struggle with make ammo paints unless I sort of use them for uh, detail painting, which is fine then. Um, so what I've done is is I've decided to do something different, and I watched a video from the master himself, Meg. And what you've got to basically do is is you've just got to basically just do it really really thin coats at a time and let each one dry so what you're actually doing is is breaking the surface uh, context and the texture of the first bits of paint so as soon as the first bits of paint have down and layered and gone down your other paint has then got the the aspect to grasp the other paint so that's why i was fine because i've always been a heavy airbrush uh, painter I have where I don't do misty layers you know in very thin layers what I do is I just do all that shh, shh, make sure it's all done and covered um, so I've always been quite a heavy airbrush uh, whereas obviously now I've slowed down and just done it bits and bobs and you know taking its time uh, inside the cockpit that's all weathered and dusted um, it's done with um, I don't know if you can see the, the dials on that. What I've done is I've added some uh, um, the um, micro crystal clear glue on the dials instead of using the uh, decals. Um, and I've got a very thin brush and I've painted the um, white dials on there and everything. I don't know if you can 100% see. So it just looks like there's better detail there. You can, I don't know if you can see just in there neither. Just make out there, it's all been dry brushed and weathered and with pigments and everything else. Uh, the buttons and everything are in there on the, on the cockpit itself and the dials and that. So hopefully you can see that, it's all ready to go. Um, again the wings, Not if, I, I've, I've added a few, I was going to do it actually flying in the air. Um, so what I've done is I've had, I was going to do all the um, undercarriage and that all sealed up. But I thought, just in case, I'm going to just add a few bits of wiring in there just to add a bit of detail, copper wiring. It looks a bit naff at the minute, but once it's painted up, it might look a bit different. Again, right, let's move this out of the way. Fit issues again on the wings, round where the bends are here. Oh, Jesus. Um, so basically what I've done is, I haven't used filler on this, but I've managed to squeeze it and pinch it together. And I've just kept going over it with um, Tamias uh, extra thin just to fill the gaps a bit better and I've added a bit of sprue goo um, just around certain edges when then I've just um, basically sanded them off I've added some sprue glue there so that'll be sanded as well just wanted to try it just a little bit just to see what it was like um, but we'll see so that's that uh, that's about it for it at the minute guys um, I am enjoying it to be fair. I didn't at first I wasn't and I was ready to put it back in its box and sod it. But I am quite enjoying it now. Um if any of you want me to make a video of how to make how I've made my seat belts and seat harnesses, I've actually only used two materials for them. Um obviously apart from the super glue and the um well the super glue I didn't use any extra thin or anything like that. So basically, I suppose you could say I used three materials, but really, I only made, I only used two. And um, I've seen loads of videos out on the YouTube of how to make um, seat harnesses and that. So, you know, there's thousands. And, and mine, are, bear in mind, I've never done them before. It's just my first attempt, and I was just quite chuffed with them. And somebody I showed actually said, wow, they do actually look realistic. 
so um, if any of you want me to do a video of how, to, how I did them basically all I used was this size Tamiya tape that's the first bit I used and the last bit of bits I used was this fuse wire they are the only items I used to use uh, to make them um, I used these because they are actually perfect sizing for the buckles around as you bend the fuse wire around the tops they are basically jewellery um, tools but they're actually yeah, small tweezers, pliers, you know um, they're actually yeah, Reval I think I got them from the Reval set but yeah it, it's just dead simple with those with those two elements, materials I can do seat harnesses so there you go I also want to show you just one more thing I found in my uh, old stash um, of tools and everything the other day I was going through them these babies, look at them sprue cutters and here they are in the flesh they're awesome guys honestly they feel so nice in, the, in your hand and look at them they just look wicked don't they i don't use that much cytadel stuff i think i've got one paint actually which is uh, steel i think of theirs i want to use the um, game sometimes i've well i don't use i've never used it but i've got some of the green stuff the putty um, I've never used that, but I have got some. But these are beautiful, guys. I was so chuffed when I found them again. I thought, oh, yes. Because normally I use, like, these, the Tamiya ones for the thin bits of plastic. Or I use my um, red. Yeah, what are they called? The red um, Zuon cutters. Which are beautiful ones. They are absolutely beautiful, they are. But they are dead pricey, they were got them when I was minted <laughs> but these are dead nice they really are nice about 15 quid I think I can remember picking them up all from games workshop but yeah they're beautiful <laughs> anyway guys bit of useful useless information there for you anyway guys uh, that's so that's first update of uh, my entry into Matt Hill's um Pacific group build um it's okay it's coming along um, I can't make my mind up though guys, I want you to help me out whether to uh, do, see Corsairs to me are just normally all blue, right, which I love, that's how I associate Corsairs, but I did originally pick this one here, which is uh, blue there, intermediate blue, and then white underneath, because look you can see I've marked it, so that was the one I was originally going to do. However, I don't know, I just associate Corsairs being all blue like this, plus I like the little uh, lightning flash on the wing, on the, the wing tip there, but I, th I was thinking I might still add that anyway onto that there somewhere anyway, just to make it look a bit more flashy, because you know I don't do anything historically correct. But I don't know. Tell me what you think, guys. I really don't know. Anyway, guys, hope you're well. Hope you all stay safe. And may the force be with you.